Hello, friends, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your very, very sweaty host, Jan. I hope you're doing well. I really do hope that, yes, in sunny United Kingdom, it's sunny, apparently, and I'm sweating my gonads off here in my little office with my studio lights on me. But that's where we are, and this is what I'm doing. I'm here to talk to you today about Pochettino's stunning claims of ambition for his currently misfiring Chelsea for this season. Incredible season really, as well as talking about Michalo Mudrik getting turned inside out and roasted by 34-year-old Kyle Walker, my age. Incredible, incredible. Uh, strap yourselves in. Thank you for joining me. Do consider supporting the content if you want to by liking and subscribing. All right, then, let's get into it. Okay, let's start with Misha Mudrik. I did speak about this on my sister channel, Football Yannick, a little bit more broadly. That channel is not generally dedicated to Chelsea fans or people interested in Chelsea Football Club, though I did want to speak about it a little bit because I believe non-Chelsea fans would be interested in the story of Mikhailo Mudrik. So do feel free to go and support the other content uh, on Football Yannick, but... <laughs> I want to talk about him. Everyone's friggin' talking about Mudrik at the moment. <sighs> he, yeah, so England drew to Ukraine. They scored an equaliser through the aforementioned Walker. So he was really the man of the game. And Mudrik is... he When he gets on the ball, the Ukrainian fans lose their ruddy sugar. So they, he is still the man. Of course, Alexander Zinchenko is like won titles of City, plays in the midfield, scored the goal. But nothing, they don't really cheer or get off their seats until Mudrik gets on the ball of course he tore up in um the ukrainian league and uh and indeed the champions league a little bit but he got absolutely roasted sent to the shops whatever you want to say by walker to the point where he injured himself uh trying to cut back from his speed um mudrik turned 22 years old like around when we signed him in January. And uh, like I said, Walk is 33, 34. Just absolutely had him on toast with his like experience and his athleticism, which blows my fragile little mind that a man of this similar vintage to me can do that. But here we are. And I'm just sweating sitting here. So anyway, um, look, I'll kind of break down a few things that I said in my other video, but look, Adam Crafton of The Athletic spoke about this on the Athletic Football Podcast, saying he covered Mudrik at Shakhtar. Uh, and his near move to Arsenal and why he was going for so much money. Um, you can talk about, we're not going to get into the details, but of course he, he got slam dunked into a dysfunctional team mid-season in January. Another country, another league, while his home country is in conflict. You know, awful. But yes, they are all relevant excuses and they might be enough. But there's stuff to talk about like... How, and again, I go into more detail in the other video, but he's undercoached, apparently. When Shakhtar had um, all their Brazilian players leave due to that special clause in all the footballer contracts in Ukraine, that, like, for example, the Brazilians, they're allowed to leave. The country's invaded. They're, of course, allowed to rip up their contracts and go to another league. Mudrik, as a Ukrainian international, understandably stayed. And um, the tactics for Shakhtar the next became channeled through Mudrik essentially it was transitional football defend play Mudrik in the channel Mudrik's very fast Mudrik's an incredibly insanely fast ball carrier and he's got a hella of a hammer shot on him and running on transition it worked and he became the sort of star uh, of course he's credibly athletic he's really really dedicated he's this like um super ambitious he wants to win the Ballon d'Or he compares himself to Vinicius Jr in terms of his first struggle seasons and all of it might be relevant and if you are interested in more detail about the nuances of Mikhailo Mudrik's struggles at Chelsea I would waft you in the general direction of Football Yannick the other channel where I talk about it in detail and what Adam Crafton said but in the meantime Chelsea fans are frustrated to see this he looks like he might have an injury now it's not a good look to get absolutely roasted by Walker like in theory before that game people are thinking oh Mudrik versus Walker this will be an interesting battle two speedsters nothing I mean I've, it's got to be largely a confidence thing now as well you hear the fans when he gets on the ball they they are excited about him he's like the young bright star you know this young I don't know like I suppose he's got a cool aesthetic isn't he like tattoos are pretty cool am I right guys <laughs> 
<laughs> because you know what I mean? He's like really, really athletic. He's a sort of young blonde hair, like sort of like, I don't know, like he, he's got a cool aesthetic. Like a sort of like, he could be this icon uh, vibe. I don't know, man. Like he's clearly really, really low on confidence. He makes poor decisions. I know, I imagine Chilwell would have, con- was, would have gone to speak to him after the game, who of course was starting at left back for Chelsea. He kind of taken Mikhailo Mudrik under his wing at Chelsea and said to the media, like this guy's just, like really, really good. You know, you need to like wait for him and give him a chance. But I'm really worried. I, I feel like the raw potential is there, but I feel like Chelsea have spent 60 million pounds rising up to 88 million pounds on raw potential that possibly doesn't suit Pochettino. And like Adam Crafton of The Athletic said, he's undercoached. He's good at running in transition, but all the other nuances that you need as a top, top winger in the uh, Premier League, at the higher echelons of the Premier League, all this information, tactical information you need to retain. It's not about just fitness. You need confidence as well that he's just not got it at the moment. And clearly Pochettino sees that. And that's why he hasn't got a start. People people probably calling for a start. Start Mudrick, start Mudrick. But you, we don't know as well as the manager. So we'll see what happens. There's still time. Of course, Pochettino did very, very well in coaching the likes of Human Son, who's a, like a transitional fast player that, you know, travels fast through the ball and finishes. So maybe there's something to be done there. We've got to fight. I mean, the raw potential is biblical level. So over time, Pochettino as a young player coach will back himself to get the most out of Mudrik. Anyway, I wanted to talk about it. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you thought about that game yesterday. And let's move on and talk about the gaffer himself and what he's been saying. So yes, Maurizio Pochettino has done an interview with BBC Sport where he was first asked about the transfer window and then when Chelsea can win trophies, which are big, big, you know, relevant questions to the Chelsea manager at the moment. First of all, you know, he said it was stressful, it was just tricky, the transfer window, but he's not frustrated because he says, and he was very, very mindful to assert this to the interviewer that he knew about this. He came into Chelsea with his eyes wide open. Obviously, he spoke to Boley, Barley, Win Stanley, uh, Stewart, everyone, and he sat down and said, like, and they were like, look, Poch, we want you here. We're going to give you what you want. We're going to give you the players that you want. We're going to give you the means to coach and, you know, you have freedom. We're going to give you investment. You won't have what you had at Tottenham. You'll have all the stuff you want. And, you know, you've come back a better coach, as you've said, and all this, and everything is going to be sweet. But you need to understand, mate, that this is what we're going to do. We're going to clean the deck, mate. We're going to start Project 2030 now. We've already started it with um, Potter in January. We're going to buy all these young players. We're going to get rid of these players. We're going to sell some maybe you don't like. Um, you might not like, rather, the fact that we're selling some. But we're going to do all this. And, you know, it's going to be a heavy period of transition and ins and outs and it's going to be quite a congested period so he would have come in and be like right i understand what's going on we the media and i include myself in that even though i'm a sort of biased chelsea fan we look through the lens of just this lunacy this like incredible insane business that chelsea are like, look what they're doing look at the money they're spending mason mount's gone to manchester united disaster ha oh, they're all none of them have no idea what they're doing oh my god there's no experience and granted that might be a good, you know, criticism, no experience. You know, this is this is not, they're not, not just making up as they go along. This is very much a long-term plan. Like, you know, Tuchel knew about this. Uh, Potter definitely knew about this. And Frank Lampard knew about it. Frank Lampard's defended the owners. Recently, John Terry has come out and defended the owners, saying that we know what they're doing. We know what they're trying to do. And they got the right intentions. And, you know, we need to be patient. We need to be patient. Chelsea will be back. Which kind of leads me on to what else... Um, Maurizio Pochettino said because the interviewers of the BBC lady said when are Chelsea expected or going to or aiming to win trophies because like you know clearly it's tricky right now and he said a few months you know he's he was very he wasn't like oh we'll see well we'll see what happens you know at the end of the day we're gonna try all this and you know we we'll just give everything that was kind of a little bit more Graham Potter but he sounds a little bit more like Tuchel like now Chelsea mate we gotta win we're in the competitions we win in the competitions he wins so he said a few months and then like he rightly referenced the cups that were still in both of them just by the way he's getting sneaking past wimbledon um but you know he's going to be learning so much from these games early doors like right don't play him play him play him you know these, these are important first steps but you know i'm pleased he didn't say about the premier league because you know you got <laughs> manchester city winning four out of four 
like relatively flawlessly and like Erling Haaland just scoring another hat trick. Like, yeah, see how we go. So yeah, you just can't compare it to that. And he would have been like, you know, no one would have taken him seriously at this point if he's like the Premier League. Yeah, to say like we want to win a few months, cups, man. Fair enough, I dig it. And to be honest, I endorse it fully. This is kind of the mentality we need to cultivate of just, yeah, we need to do it. We need to win. We need to win. We need to try and win now. We're Chelsea. We're, why not? We've got the assets. We've. And by the way, I think he's kind of like projecting like, yeah, right now, looking at my team, like this can't win. But they're really a fit. And Chelsea are really fit. Okay, so they're, they're fit enough. We weren't fit enough all last season. They're already fit enough and they're scoped to get fitter. You know, people speculate you're not up to full fitness until the end of September after the first international break. And Chelsea already look pretty darn fit. So there's that. But he's also probably thinking, in a few months, my team's going to be much better. We've planned this out. We've mapped it. Just how Chelsea's owners, have, and I know this is all theory, right? But just how Chelsea's owners have mapped out, bang, 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 you know, and by then we're going to have these players in, those players out, and the project's going to be developed this much, and, you know, the Stamford Bridge and infrastructure and everything moving forwards. Pochettino will be doing the same with his coaching staff. So, look, it is, we probably could have done with an extra couple of points, like maybe say, you know, whatever, or like, you know, extra three points, say the loss against West Ham. Or the loss against Nottingham Forest would have, should have been a win. The way at West Ham it happens, they did the same away at Brighton's home. So, like, say we're only, like, three points off, say, where they'd like to be. Something like that. Just say that. And even that, you know, it's really early. The season's just started. Everything's just coming into place. But he's probably going, right, what can I see from these games and where we're going to be in a few months? We've said it on the channel before, like, Chelsea's metrics, not goal scoring, that's the most important. I'm not trying to evade that. But, like, possession, passes, passes in the opposition third, they're really high. So he's looking at how they want to play and just saying, look, in a few months these issues will be better. And if these issues are better, suddenly Chelsea as a team are bang, way better than they are. And I know that's like, you might say it's clutching its draws or whatever, but it's, it's the truth, man. That is the truth. We're not that far from being a good team. And then from there, being a competitive team to win, maybe not far as well. I do believe in the talent in the squad. I know a lot of people are frustrated with high cost players that aren't very sexy names, but you know, the old Chelsea used to bring in these sort of sexy names and um, towards the end it wasn't working. So to build a team, you know, through strategy and philosophy long-term, I think it's the way to go. Obviously, we still got the sexy names to come back. You know, Christopher Nkunku should be a massive welcome return for Chelsea. Hopefully by the time he does return in, was it December or whatever, we will be settled and scoring goals and he and the pressure because if he if he comes back to the Chelsea team and he's like we're still not scoring goals oh god you're back thank god you're back you know get into the team and score goals that's unfair that's too much pressure and that's going to be detrimental much to I think like if you look at Nico Jackson at the moment I think he's playing well but I think maybe the pressure of being like you're Chelsea's number nine mate now or like Chelsea's striker now you just got a score bruv I don't think it's helpful so systemically when we get a bit better and that is down to Pochettino and his staff these little moments around the box like Nottingham Forest when you're passing the ball around and you look devoid of ideas that's coaching your players are fit your players are technically good you need to coach into their brains how to systemically create a chance and opening in that final third so that is coaching and then the coach comes out and says yeah in a few months we're gonna win a trophy stunning really confident and i like it i you know i did like graham potter i'll sort of die on that hill i think he's a good coach and a good guy but you need to really assert that sort of belief and just absolute yeah we're gonna do it we're gonna do it in a few months so yeah i wanted to talk about it here we are let me know what you think about pochettino's comments uh, also let me know what you think about um misha mudrick getting you know sent for a coffee by uh, kyle walker and um yeah we're very interested in reading your comments thank you for continuing to support the content liking and subscribing and thank you for following me on social media at football yannick incidentally the name of my second channel football yannick all right, that's enough plugging. See you very soon. Peace. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.